I don't know, I can feel music like a space in a way. You can listen to it actively or you can just, you know, it could be just on one of those Spotify chilled out <laughs> playlists. Right. <laughs> Are we on that? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> a man. You know, we were friends and um, you know Bill would come over and we'd kind of like talk about films we we're both interested in movies a lot and uh, specifically Catherine Briart this French director um, and I had a book about her films analyzing her films and so we'd like kind of trading that or sharing and then watching um, I found these uh, this old clips on YouTube of Pink Floyd from 68 uh, live and it really seemed like they were just essentially playing noise music with people dancing to it <laughs> which was like wow that's kind of amazing and uh, you know with the light show and everything and um, and yeah with Sid Barrett sitting down playing like prepared guitar like Bill <laughs> you know with like a file or something Actually, in Sonic Youth, I was always amazed when I saw young people there, and that is definitely all because of the internet. You know, just um, people finding out about music they wouldn't, you know, know about. Access and available. Not part of their generation. Or not. Mm -hmm. um, and I was always grateful that actually there were so many women, you know, in the audience and. Um, people of color, <laughs> it's always like, you know, because, you know, the indie world is so white and um, narrow, and um, actually, it was fun playing at the um, Trip Metal Festival in Detroit. Oh yeah, that was a fun fest. Just because, like, <clears throat> wow, there's, like, more than, like, two people of color in the audience, <laughs> you know, it's like, it was like, it felt a little more integrated yeah. and interesting. You know, when the undergrad, that, this underground scene developed, it really did develop with the internet in the, the late 90s and um, mid to late 90s. And I think it made it just more accessible and so brought more people into it besides sort of the male record collector type, which I was equate with that genre of music. Not that women don't collect records, but there is something very male about record collecting. Don't, wouldn't you say? I don't know. I think that might be like a older narrative. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That was an older uh, but, narrative, yeah. and that, that started changing. Yeah, and, I mean, now and, there's uh, bands that grew up with the raincoats and grew up with, like, the slits and grew up with, even, like, the noise scene, there's, like, a lot more women. They're not totally represented, which is a problem, but like regionally there's more women involved um, but no I think there's totally still toxic males involved in music everything is a bit more commercial more money looking I mean just all the construction for one you know all the people all the construction the people look different There was once this guy who was sort of stalking us. He was waiting outside for us when we lived on Eldridge Street, and we had to go to Hoboken to rehearse. And we couldn't get rid of him. Like, he was just, he, was, he seemed kind of harmless. So he followed us up on the subway, and Thurston kept saying, um, you know, I'm gonna report you to the police or something like that. Anyway, so he followed us, you know, up the subway to the PATH train, the PATH train, and then Thurston just walked right into the police station, and he followed him and said, um, told the police officer, they called his mother or something, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we didn't see him after that. Mm -hmm. 